Welcome to our lecture online. In these three examples, we have to look for two potential things that we need to prevent. First of all, if there's a denominator, we cannot have a zero in the denominator. And secondly, if there's a radical, the quantity inside the radical cannot be less than zero. It cannot be a negative number. So those are the two restrictions we have to look for when we're looking for the domain. So for the first two examples, there's no denominator, so we don't have to worry about it being equal to zero, but we do have to worry about what's inside the radical that it cannot be less than zero. So in other words, x minus 8 must be greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, you have something that's not defined. You cannot have the square root of a negative number being defined. And so now we can move the 8 across, which means that x must be greater than or equal to 8. And so that's our restriction for the domain that is equal to the value of all x's or the set of all x's such that x must be greater than or equal to 8. All right, on our next example, we attack it the same way. We look and see what's inside the radical. We realize that must be greater than or equal to 0. So we have 3x plus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. We move the 12 across. The 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 3 and we get x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So that's the only restriction. Therefore, the domain is equal to the set of all x's such that x must be greater than or equal to negative 4. On the next one, it's a little bit more complicated. We have two potential restrictions. For one, the denominator cannot equal 0. So in other words, 2 minus 10x equals 0 solve this for x and now whatever that value is that's what x cannot be so move the 2 across we get minus 10x is equal to uh, let's see here that's negative 2 divide both sides by negative 10 and so we have x is equal to 2 over 10 which is equal to 1 over 5 so that's the value that x cannot be we cannot have x equal to 1 fifth otherwise the denominator will be 0 now we also need the restriction where the, what's inside the radical cannot be less than 0. So we know that 2 minus 10x must be greater than or equal to 0. Moving the 2 across, we have minus 10x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. Now I need to divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, which means I have to turn the inequality symbol around. So minus 10x minus 2 divide both sides by negative 10 which means we're going to turn that inequality symbol around, so now we write it as less than or equal to, because we're dividing by a negative number. So the restriction is that x must be less than or equal to, and that would be equal to 2 tenths or 1 fifth. So this is one restriction, and the other restriction is that x cannot equal 1 fifth. So, here we see that x must be less than or equal to 1 fifth, but here we tell us that x cannot equal 1 fifth, which means that x must be smaller than 1 fifth. So when we combine these two together, combine these two restric restrictions together, combine, so we realize that x can be less than 1 fifth, but not equal to 1 fifth. So the domain then becomes the set of all x's such that x is equal to or is less than one-fifth, not equal to one-fifth, so it's less than one-fifth, and that's the way we take care of that particular example. So notice that in this case, we had two things to worry about. We had a denominator that included an x, so that means we look for the value of x that makes the denominator zero, and then we write that x cannot be that value. And secondly, since we have some quantity inside the radical, we know that it cannot be that it must be greater than or equal to zero, so then we solve for that, we have the result that x must be less than or equal to, to one-fifth, but we do have to combine the two conditions, which eliminates the value for x equal being one-fifth, and that is how it's done. Okay, so there's a nice numerical example. 